Welcome to the BioWolf Bash scripting class. In this section, we will go over the history feature in Bash and look at history expansion. By default, the Bash shell records the commands we execute on the shell prompt. And then Bash provides us shell functionality to search through this history of commands, recall one or more commands, and manipulate the recall commands before re-executing them. While your current Bash history is stored in memory, Bash makes a history list available across sessions by storing it in a file at the end of a session. This file is usually a hidden file called .bash underscore history and is located in a user's home directory. However, on the BioWolf cluster, the history file is located in a slightly different file depending on whether you are logged into BioWolf's login node or on Helix, the data transfer node. We'll take a look at this during the demo. Bash provides many ways to interact with the history. To begin with, there is the history command, which helps display and manipulate the history list. And then there is the fc command, which stands for fix command, which helps edit and re-execute commands from the history list. We are also able to use the exclamation mark syntax on the prompt, which instructs the shell to perform history expansion. The syntax provides ways to search, retrieve, and manipulate the history. For a more interactive interface, there is the reverse iSearch prompt that is started with the control R key combination. And perhaps the most common and basic way to access history lists is with the up and down arrow keys. This isn't an exhaustive list of ways to interact with one's command history, but let's focus on these and see them in action. Here we are logged into BioWolf and on the bash prompt. Before we explore the different ways to interact with our history list, Let's first explore some options and settings related to bash history. The variable hist file stores the path of the file where bash will record your commands when you log out of your current session. Let's take a look at this variable with echo. As I mentioned before, this is a hidden file. So while we are in slash home slash teacher, running the ls command doesn't list that file. We have to use the hyphen A flag to list hidden files that start with the dot character. And there is the file. Of course, ls can list the file without the A flag if the file name is provided as an argument or with variable expansion as well. Now this file contains the commands recorded in previous sessions. At the end of the current session, bash will record as many commands as specified by the hist file size variable. Default settings on BioWolf set that to 1000 commands, so at any point there will be 1000 or less commands recorded in the history file. There is also the hist size option, which specifies how many commands will be kept in memory in the current session, which is the history list. This can include commands from previous sessions. Another variable is a hist cmd variable. It is not a setting, but a convenient piece of information and tells us the history number or index of the next command we execute. So for this next command, which will be number 16, I will introduce the history command. Shell prints out all commands in the history list, which includes the command index number as the first column. This is what the hist cmd variable referred to, and as we saw earlier, the last command we ran matches what we found earlier. The next column is the time at which the command was run, we can change this to give us more details on the time, which this setting is in the hist time format variable. Currently, it is set to the hour and minute percent capital H dash percent capital M, but there are many more options that you're welcome to explore. See the manual page for date and scroll down with the space or arrow keys. and quit the manual with the Q command. To see what else we can do with the history command, let's see its documentation. This includes clearing your history or adding the history list in memory to the history file and other features. One helpful one is the N argument. For example, this shows the last 10 commands in the list. Moving on to the FC command, let's see its help documentation. FC can help us retrieve one or more commands, edit them in a command line editor like VI, and re-execute them. So let's try that. 
I will retrieve commands 10 to 12 from our history list. Now we are in the VI editor. I'm going to make some superfluous changes just for the demonstration. Uh, press I to start editing. Press the escape key to come out of the editing mode and then colon W Q to save and quit. Shell will rerun these commands as edited. Since I just added the L flag to the different LS commands, we get the output for each. Note that the FC command used to retrieve and re-execute from the history list is itself not part of our history list. But the commands that were re-executed are. Let's talk about the history expansion character, the exclamation mark. To view the documentation for this, we can look into the bash menu and jump to the history expansion section. To do that, press the forward slash key, which is used to search the manual, and enter the caret symbol and type history expansion in all caps. Then press enter. As you can see, bash provides a very detailed way to recall, edit and run previous commands. Let's try some of these methods. Let's start with two exclamation marks, which is short for running the last command. This opens a bash manual again, since that was the last command. I'll quit and go back to the prompt. An exclamation mark followed by a number pulls out that specific command from the history list. Here's the last 10 again. Let's read on command number 23 in the history list. Note that this is similar to other bash expansions. The shell first interprets the history expansion replaces it appropriately, and then runs the command. As a result, the history expansion doesn't need to be the first word in the command line. We can, for example, place the same expansion above as an argument to echo. This literally prints that command instead of running it. With history expansion, we can also bring back commands relative to the current one using the negative number syntax. For example, this brings back the second to last command in our history list. Just a quick note, the double exclamation mark we saw earlier is equivalent to negative 1. Let's confirm that with the echo command. Now, we can also search the history with the exclamation mark syntax. For example, to bring back the last head command I ran, I can type exclamation mark head and the shell runs it again. Great. We can also refer to arguments of previous commands with a history expansion. For example, this is short for retrieving all the arguments passed to the last command, but not the command itself. And this gets the first argument using the caret symbol, the last argument using dollar sign symbol from the previous command. Note that the first argument in the previous command was actually the hyphen L flag, while the last was the test2.csv file path. Which brings up the question about how to refer to each argument with more precision. To do this, we use the n colon w syntax, where n is the index or relative index of the command in the history list, and w is the word in the command. Let's try it. This brings the second argument from the second to last command we ran. Great. There's a lot more you can do with history expansion and I encourage you to go through the documentation we saw earlier. Let's move on to the reverse interactive search feature or reverse iSearch. At any time on a bash prompt, if we enter the key combination control plus R, the shell brings us to a new prompt where we can search the history backwards. So if I enter ls, the last ls command in the history list is shown. I can press Ctrl R again to go back further. And when I get to the one I want, I can hit enter, which will run the command, or I can press any other key which will place that command onto the prompt where I can edit and re-execute. I'll do the latter and edit the flags for ls. Good. The last part of the demo is probably the easiest and most familiar to everyone. We can scroll through the history list using the up and down arrows. 
It's a very handy feature that is used very often. Okay, I hope that gave you a good overview of interacting with the history list, particularly with history expansion. These are the two new commands I introduced in the demo. First was the history command, and the second was the FC command. To summarize, in the demonstration we went over some of the settings related to how Bash records history, and then we saw some of the ways Bash Shell provides us to work with the history of executed commands that the shell records. These include the history and FC commands, history expansion with the exclamation mark syntax, reverse iSearch, and the simple up and down arrow keys. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please email us at staff at hpc.nih.gov.